Even after all these years, GNOME and KDE are still the main desktop environments for Linux. Plenty of others are available now, and some of them are just as advanced and just as good, but the big ones, they're still GNOME and KDE. And both these desktops have their very vocal supporters and detractors, because they both have very different philosophies. And that's good. Choice is good. But it also means that newcomers and generally Linux users might not really know which one they should dedicate any time to learning and which one they should really use depending on their preferences. The goal is absolutely not to tell you that one is better than the other. It's just to give you all the facts so you can start using or move to something that really works for you. And you can also start listening to this segue to our sponsor. If you have ever read an article online and wondered who exactly was behind that website, if they had a specific bias or agenda, then boy do I have a good service for you. It is Ground News. Click the link in the description or scan the QR code that should appear somewhere on screen to follow along while I tell you how things work. To explain, let's take a look at this story on Google's carbon emissions rising due to their focus on AI. With Ground News, I can be up to speed on this story in seconds with their summaries and a bias comparison showing me what the left, what the center and what the right are focusing their reporting on for this specific story. This is based on more than 90 articles here that Ground News found covering this exact story coming from across the world and across the political spectrum. For example, there's this article from the Inquirer. Ground News shows me their reporting is somewhat credible, it leans politically left and they are based in the Philippines. I can either read their coverage or keep scrolling for a different perspective on this story. Or I can look at the visual breakdowns on the right for quick data on all the news sources covering this. I really think Ground News is a fantastic service for you to improve your understanding of various issues and various stories and also to understand what's your echo chamber and to try and escape it. So click the link in the description or scan the QR code on screen to go to the Ground News website and to get 40% off the same Vantage plan that I use to get all my news. Okay, so back to our desktops and let's start with the design philosophies behind each one because they sort of condition everything else. KDE goes for simple by default, powerful when needed. As in, the default layout of your desktop is very simple, the defaults are really sane and apps tend to only show the most used features. But when you dig a bit deeper, you have tons of extra features, options and settings to really make things your own or to just do everything without needing a lot of third-party applications to fill in the gaps. And KDE absolutely succeeds at this. Anyone who ever used Windows can get started using KDE and will not feel lost. But when you start wanting to change a few options here and there, you might be overwhelmed by the sheer number of settings pages and the sheer number of settings on each of these pages. Gnome, on the other hand, goes for super accessible and simple, meaning they make conscious choices to not include a lot of options and to not clutter the interface. The goal is to give you a very simple, legible and easy to understand interface and to let third-party apps give you more advanced features that might not be in their default applications. Gnome also succeeds at this, but the fact that they weigh every single option and its long-term cost in terms of maintenance and stability and design means that some people feel that they're either too slow in implementing new features or that they're dumping down their desktop or that it's just too limiting for their use. In the end, KDE will very likely be much more familiar with virtually everyone because let's be honest, everyone at some point used Windows as their default operating system. Gnome does away with all of this and thus will be a bit harder to get to grips with at first, but once you get the workflow, it might just click and you just have one single key press on your keyboard to access the single view that lets you do everything. It's also very efficient. Now, from these design principles, you can easily infer what the views of each desktop are in terms of customization. KDE can be turned into anything and Gnome is on the surface at least a lot more rigid. 
Just in terms of looks, KD lets you apply themes for everything out of the box. You can change the icons, the look of the buttons, the colors of every part of every window, the accent color of the desktop, the shape of your title bars, the entire layout of the desktop, everything can be tweaked if you want to. KDE even has built-in stores to let you install community-made layouts, themes, icons, widgets, and everything in between. These can have some security concerns, of course, but the focus is clearly on letting you make whatever the hell you want. GNOME, on the other hand, is often viewed as inflexible and limited, and that's not necessarily the case either. By default, yes, GNOME does not give you the options to change the layout or the look. You need a third-party app to handle any of this. GNOME doesn't have accent colors yet either. They will get them in their next release, GNOME 47, which at the time I'm recording this is still two and a half months away. But with the GNOME Tweaks app and the Extension Manager app, you get a lot of possibilities. You can change the theme of your desktop and the apps, you can change the cursors, the icons, the button styles, the colors. Extension Manager lets you install extensions that can turn GNOME into something else. Ubuntu creates their desktop based on GNOME with extensions. Zorin OS does the same. The current version of Pop OS, before they start using their future Cosmic desktop, also does it. Extensions can let you have a Windows-like layout, a global menu, a system tray, anything really. The main difference here is that KD officially has the built-in mechanisms to tweak things, to theme things, and they want to expose all of these features to the user. GNOME doesn't really want you to do that, and extensions and themes are in sort of a gray area. You can use them, you can do them, but they're not necessarily officially supported by the GNOME project, meaning that extensions can break when you update your version of GNOME, and themes are definitely not something that GNOME supports, so you will definitely encounter some problems visually in certain apps that just won't work well with the theme you picked. Granted, that can also happen on KDE, but on KDE, this is an official feature of the desktop. So KDE obviously wins in terms of customization. You can completely tailor Gloom to your needs, but there's no telling if these customization will last uh, your next distro upgrade. But what about support for more modern features and future proofing of these desktops? The Linux desktop as a whole is moving away from the older X11 display server because its architecture is stuck in the past and too hard to evolve. No one wants to deal with it. So every major project is moving towards Wayland, which has some limitations, but enables a lot of stuff like HDR, variable refresh rate, better fractional scaling, and the like. And on this front, let's be honest, KDE has the edge over GNOME. Both desktops have very solid Wayland support. They just gained explicit sync support, meaning users of NVIDIA GPUs should have a really good experience now, provided they use the latest drivers and the latest GNOME or KDE. But after that, KDE just has made a lot more progress on all of this stuff. HDR is officially supported on KDE. You have a toggle that is available in the display settings, provided your display supports it, which mine doesn't. There's still some work to be done to make sure color accuracy is solid, but this work is already underway with the ability to load your own ICC color profile or to use the one your display might provide. KD supports having both SDR and HDR content side by side, and it can let you run full screen HDR content as well, notably games and movies. GNOME only has an experimental command line to toggle HDR, and right now it is not fully baked. They have plans to improve it in GNOME 47 by letting you play SDR and HDR content side by side, but chances are it won't be a stable feature that people can just turn on in the regular settings. Same goes for variable refresh rate, the feature that lets your display change its refresh rate to accommodate the content playing on screen, something that can make gaming way smoother and also lets you save battery life on laptops. KD has it by default built in and stable. You can turn it on in the display settings. GNOME only has experimental support for it right now that you do need to enable manually with a command line or through a utility called dconf. And on the fractional scaling front, Plasma supports it better than GNOME as well. Plasma has it natively and in a stable version in the settings where GNOME still considers their implementation experimental and you need to enable it manually through dconf as well. 
Again, GNOME 47 should finish this implementation, but at the time I'm recording this, it has not been made into a stable option. In the end, the state of things is that KDE has a sizable lead on variable refresh rate, on HDR, on fractional scaling, and on color management over GNOME. GNOME is probably going to catch up with GNOME 47 and GNOME 48, but whether these things will be made stable and a default option you can simply toggle is really uncertain. If you don't need any of these features, if your hardware doesn't support it, then both desktops are basically on par. They have really good Wayland support, and if you cannot or don't want to run Wayland, they have really good X11 support as well. But if your hardware has these features and you want to take advantage of this, you currently need to use KDE over GNOME. Now, on the topic of applications, GNOME has the upper hand. GNOME, by making a very clear and well-defined development platform for developers, ensured that basically most people developed apps using GNOME's guidelines. The end result is that virtually every time you hear about a new app, it is designed to integrate with GNOME and not with KDE. Now, KDE also has plenty of available applications, and they're generally more powerful with more features, but they're also generally much older and have very busy and not up-to-date user interfaces. Things are changing a bit with a newer framework called Kirigami that lets developers build simpler KDE apps. We have good examples of this like Marknote or Mercuro, but in the end, GNOME just has a more vibrant app ecosystem with a lot of utilities that do one task well and some more advanced apps like Planify, which is an excellent project management app, or Gafor, a UML modeling and diagram tool. And of course, you can run GNOME apps inside of KDE or KDE apps inside of GNOME, but they just will not look right. They won't use your usual conventions. They will just not look integrated. If that's an important thing for you, if you like your desktops to be coherent, then you need to use GNOME over KDE. Now, as per stability and bugs, this will really depend on the distribution you use, how well they package these desktops for you, and even on your hardware. KDE often has the image of being buggier than GNOME because it had a relatively long period of time where they had a weird release cycle. They pushed one release full of new features, but which was also very buggy. And then they pushed one polished release, which fixed most of the bugs, but not all of them. KDE, since it has a lot of features, also has a lot more potential compatibility problems between these features that can create bugs. It's a fact, with software, the more you do, the more features you have, the more points of failure you have, and the buggier your thing will be. You have more components, so you have more potential bugs. It's also very difficult to use the number of open bugs as a judge for each desktop, because obviously bugs are first reported against specific components of that desktop, and also a pure number wouldn't really mean anything, because some bugs might be very old and were just never closed, some bugs might be very basic, non-important, non-impactful stuff, and some might be desktop breaking, so it's hard to judge. What I have found in use is that both desktops feel very similar now in terms of stability. I virtually never encounter a big desktop breaking bug in KDE or in GNOME. Chances are GNOME might be a bit more stable and have a little bit less bugs than what KDE has, but also it really depends. If you use the vanilla KDE desktop compared to a super customized GNOME with 20 extensions, maybe your GNOME will be buggier. And if you use a completely tailored and tweaked KDE with every option turned on, chances are you will have more bugs and you will be less stable as a platform than just vanilla GNOME without extensions. It will depend on your own experience and hardware. So this one is hard to judge. I will still say that GNOME feels a bit more polished, if only because they have less options to test. So in the end, what do you choose? I think the most important decision factor is which philosophy do you prefer? GNOME offers a more polished, more unified, and more coherent experience at the expense of most conventions people will be used to and at the expense of customization. You can bridge these gaps with extensions and themes, but they're basically a hack and they might not be as easy to apply as on KDE and they might make your desktop very unstable or buggy. KDE is basically a giant box of Lego or a toolbox. They use this toolbox to build a simple default state, but basically KDE is a collection of things you can use 
to build the exact experience you want that looks like you want it to and behaves in your own very specific way. The consequence of this is that GNOME has a better selection of available applications because it's more of a fixed platform to target, something developers tend to enjoy, and GNOME might thus be a bit more stable. But on the other hand, KDE implements more modern features faster because where GNOME can sometimes overthink a feature's design or implementation, not really starting the work or pushing it until they have sorted all the issues they could envision, KDE tends to just go for the feature and to push it to users. And then they start refining its implementation, so they just move faster on a lot of stuff. So personally, I use KDE these days and I'm very satisfied with it. It is probably what I would recommend for any new Linux beginner coming from the Windows world because it will just be more familiar and if something doesn't work exactly like they want it to, they can change it. But I also used GNOME for the longest time before I moved to KDE and I absolutely love the attention to detail, the cohesion, the look and feel, the app ecosystem. They are both fantastic choices. You decide. It's not a clear-cut choice. There is no one desktop is much better than anything else and everyone who tells you otherwise is just wrong. Just like it would be wrong to not talk about our sponsor, Tuxedo Computers. They make laptops and desktops that ship with Linux out of the box, which is a sizable advantage over buying something from a manufacturer that only supports Windows, because you know that the hardware has been tested with Linux and Tuxedo actually submits patches upstream to fix the potential compatibility problems that they encounter. They have a giant range of computers that should cover every need and every price point. I have plenty of reviews for their hardware on my channel and they're really, really solid. They're all I use these days for running this channel. It's one of their laptops for gaming. It's one of their desktops. They're all super customizable. You can't go wrong with them. So click the link in the description below if you need a new PC, you want to run Linux on it and you want to support a company that actually contributes to Linux. Go with Tuxedo Computers. They're really good. Okay, so thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications. And if you really enjoyed the channel, there are plenty of links in the description to support it and gain some extra perks. So thanks for watching and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye.